Before we dive into today's episode, I have to address my lack of attention to detail prior to this conversation you're about to watch. You see, in everything that I do, I stress attention to detail, whether it's my video production business or the content that I created in The Next Level Journalist. Everything I do, attention to detail, and yet I failed to pay attention to detail in this conversation. So the mistake that you definitely would not have missed is that I failed to look in a mirror prior to the conversation. And to my interviewee's defense, I shoot these conversations in a very flat profile, meaning there's not a whole lot of color going on. I actually color grade in the post-production process. I wanna get the best image possible, so I shoot in a flat profile, I tweak the colors and post. So what my guest saw was very gray. And when you add color, boom, there's the cinnamon roll on my face that I failed to see because I did not look in a mirror prior to getting in front of the camera. So learn from my mistake, have a mirror handy. Heck, I have a mirror right here and I failed to look into it. So learn from my mistake, look in the mirror, make sure you're clean, ready to go before you jump in front of a camera. Now here's the conversation with Kathy Stone. I did more than I was supposed to. And to me, you cannot find a better way to get into this career than to do more than you're supposed to. Welcome to the Next Level Journalist, where you will hear from some of the best journalists in the business or who have been there, done that, and willing to share with you what they've learned so you can get better, faster. My guest today is the Assistant News Director at WKRN-TV in Nashville, Tennessee. Kathy Stone, thank you so much for making time for this today. Glad to do it, Kyle. Well, I have no doubt. So Kathy, just to give people some context, you and I work together at WLEX TV, easily the best station that I've worked for. And I feel like I've worked for some pretty solid stations in the past, but knowing what I now know and the different markets uh, that I've been exposed to and the people I've talked to um, gives me more appreciation for people like you and, and Bruce who built such a great culture at LEX 18. So I have a tremendous amount of respect for you. And I'm, again, thankful for you making time for this because I know you're going to give anyone who sees this a tremendous amount of value. I hope so. That was a wonderful station. And I, so many of you have said you've learned so much there. I learned so much there. I was there for 19 and a half years. And um, that's kind of strange when you're in television news. You know, people just don't stay places that long. But that sure. truly was a great place. And we had so many wonderful people like you, Kyle. It was a, a tremendous uh, learning experience for me, too. Yeah. Well, Kathy, without further delay, let's hop into your TV journey. Obviously, WLAX was a big part of that journey. But let's go back to the beginning, if you don't mind, and tell us what got you interested in the TV industry, how you broke through, and the stops you made along the way and just bring us up to speed in a, in a Cliff Notes version. You got it. Um, I, I had a strange path to, to television. I was actually born in Southampton, New York, and I tell people uh, my family was proof that there are poor people in the Hamptons. But my dad was from a little bitty town in Kentucky called Irvin. And when I was 11, there were seven kids, and the two oldest stayed in New York, but the rest of us moved to Little Irvin, Kentucky, and um, it was the best move of my life. It truly was because it's where I started my, my television career. We had a TV production class. Estill County High School had a TV production class, and I wow. took it my senior year and absolutely loved it. We were able to break into the cable channel with our own programming. We did ball games. We did plays. We did special reports. We had our own newscast. It was an incredible opportunity. And I learned right then that I love television. Um, I thought I wanted to be a, a network photographer. And so I got the chance to go to a, another small school, Eastern Kentucky University, and they had a great TV production class, uh, a program. And I went there and just loved it. And I was a junior in college and I was working at a bakery. I had to, I walked to work at 3.30 in the morning and worked at a bakery. And believe it or not, that's how I got into television. 
I was involved in a bunch of uh, like the broadcasting club and I, I volunteered at the radio station and I, I got word during the broadcasting club from the president that the ABC affiliate in Lexington was looking for a part-time news photographer. And that's what I wanted to do. Right. So I applied and they were crazy enough to hire me. They shouldn't have. I was not very good. You know, you know how to shoot, Kyle. I was horrible. But here's why they hired me. And um, my, my very first news director, Dave White, I, I thank him so much between my high school uh, TV production teacher, Dwayne Riddle, and my very first news director, Dave White. I was so thankful. Between the two of them, I got my foot in the door. Uh, a former reporter there told me a story that Dave called her in his office and said, okay, I'm down to two candidates for this part-time news photographer's job. One has a little bit of news experience. He worked part-time, I think in like Ohio or something like that. But then I have this college kid who works at a bakery and she goes to work at 3.30 every morning. And it's between the two of them who I hired. And uh, Deidre Clark was a reporter. She said, I looked at him and I said, well, hire the baker because she's willing to get up at that, that, those hours and there are no regular hours in news, hire her. And he said, that's what I was thinking too. And that's how wow. I got my foot in the door. It was because I was, I, and, and I cleaned houses, I babysat, I raked leaves just to get through college. And you know, th there, there is a good part of being poor I went to school all four years on grants and ended up only owing eight hundred dollars. And how many oh, wow. people can say they do that now? That's how right. That's poor crazy. my family was. But it was a blessing. Mm -hmm. It truly was a blessing. And everything I, I always say, your your path, you're given so many directions to go, and it's up to you to choose your path. And boy, so many people helped me on my path, and I am so grateful. But I was I was at the ABC affiliate for seven and a half years and Dave ended up going to Nashville to a country music production company and one of my first GMs was there too. Dave and Jerry both went down there and um, Dave contacted me and for three months he kept saying come down here and work for us and I said I don't know anything about country music and he said we can teach you that. You can write we, because they did um, a show called TNN Country News. And he said, we can teach you about country music. We just need writers. And for three months, I said no. And finally, he talked me into going down there for lunch. And I met one of the producers. And it just felt right. And at the time, uh, my news director was Michael Castanguera. And he went on to become uh, a consultant. And he ended up teaching in college. I mean, just he had a lot of wisdom. And I went to him, and he said, uh, think about it and come back to me later today and tell me what you want to do. And I, I told him what they were offering me and the opportunity. And I really did appreciate his counsel. And I went in to him that night and I said, I, I think I should go. And he handed me a sealed envelope and he said, open this. And I opened it. And at the time we were all on typewriters, you know, that was yeah. before we, we were all computer driven. He had taken letterhead with the station and had typed take it 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 through the whole page and that's when i knew it was the right decision and so i went to work there's the copy and paste button on the typewriter so he typed that out he did he typed it he literally typed it and i still have that letter all these years later that was in in 1993 and i still have that letter and I went down to Nashville and loved it. It was, uh, it was a, an eye-opening experience. It taught me, I worked in country music news, but it taught me how to appreciate audio, how to appreciate video even more. And I learned a whole lot, uh, you know, stepping out of news. But I was here for six years and loved every bit of it. And TNN ended up being sold to CBS and um, you know, we saw the writing on the wall. We were afraid our company was going to, to shut down and it did, but I got out two months before because Bruce Carter, who you, you've interviewed him before, 
was the news director at LEX 18 and he hired me and he told me that being in country music news really worried him before he hired me for an executive producer job. And he called his consultant that he really uh, appreciated and said, what do I do? Uh, I don't know if I should hire her, but he had called Michael Castanguera, who was the news director when I left AB the ABC affiliate. And Michael said, if you can get her, you really should hire her. And I'm very thankful for that too. But Jack, the consultant told Bruce, you should hire her because she stepped out and she's got a new appreciation and she's going to, to bring more to you. And so that's how I was hired. So many people, I'm so, so appreciative to so many people. But I, I was at um, LEX 18 for, like I said, 19 and a half years, wonderful station. Bruce retired and I really wanted to get back to Nashville. And at the time, one of our former reporters texted me and said, we have an assistant news director's opening. And I love being an assistant news director. I, I don't aspire to be a news director at this point, but I love writing. I love creating the shows. I, I don't want to be the one that's in the budget meetings, and I don't want to be in, in so much stuff. I love to put a show together. And um, I met the GM and the news director at WKRN and really, really liked them both so much. And I'm very thankful they liked me too and offered me the job, and I've been there since uh, 2019. What I love about so much of that story is the fact that it's almost like you were sought after once you got in and even referral based everywhere along the way. You mentioned how so many people helped you along the way. So I hope people are picking, you know, paying attention. Like it wasn't an accident that I asked you because I respect you as a professional, but also just as a human being that, you know, that people think that highly of you. And like you said, like you said, you thank so many other people. Um, because they would ask somebody else about you and they said you'd be making a mistake if you don't bring her in. So, um, you know, just being a great person um, has obviously paid dividends for you. So, like I said, I no mistake that, that I wanted you on here. So, that was a great, that's a great story, Kathy. Thank you so much uh, for sharing that. And, um, and again, all the value already. And I haven't even really asked you a question outside of tell me your journey. So, um, with that said, how about what you would tell aspiring journalists, you know, if you could go back to when you were first starting and as you reflect in the position that you're in, um, what you would tell aspiring journalists about breaking through and, you know, for lack of better words, climbing the ladder, if that's what they want to do, but more so breaking through and getting that opportunity in the first place. I think I accidentally fell up the ladder is what I did. Uh, if that's possible, uh, I was hired, as I told you, as an, a, a part-time news photographer Right. And it was just the coolest thing in the world. You're a junior in college and you're studying broadcasting. And on weekends, you're driving home to campus to your dorm in a news car with your gear because you're on call, which, by the way, is great because you could park anywhere on campus and nobody gave you a ticket. <laughs> and it was just great. It was a wonderful feeling. But when I was working, that I would come in on, you know, some nights that during the week. And at the time in the 80s, you didn't really a lot of stations didn't really staff an 11 o'clock newscast with a full staff. You just, at the time, Lexington was a very small market and it was the part-time news photographer, the two anchors, your sports anchor, your weather anchor, and your producer and editor. And that's it. That was your whole staff for the 11 o'clock news. And I remember sitting in the newsroom on some nights and nothing was going on. And one night I asked the producer, I said, can I help you write? And I was afraid she was going to say, no, I don't want you. You're, you're a part-time news photographer who's a college student. And she said, oh, my gosh, do you really want to? And I was like, hmm, yeah, I would like to. And that's how I started writing. And I loved it. I, I have always liked writing, but I truly thought I wanted to be an assistant. I mean, I wanted to be a network uh, photographer. And I started writing, and the more I wrote, the more I liked it. And I always worked weekends. And we, I, Dave, when he left, we hired uh, another news director who was, um, he was kind of intimidating. He was kind of scary. He came in and, and um, he, he, you know, I, he cleared out a lot of reporters and it was, I was really afraid of what I was doing, but he hired some radio reporters and the first one he hired, he told her, I want you to be the weekend producer and be the reporter. And at the time, 
that's what you did in that market. You turned a package while you produced the weekend show. Well, I felt so bad for her because she was a radio reporter. And at the time, you also edited your package. And she was a little overwhelmed. And thankfully, I had been helping on the 11 o'clock news. So I said, well, let me, let me help you produce the show while you're putting your package together. And so that's what I did for months. I did that. Well, she ended up getting promoted and moved to Monday through Friday. And that news director hired another radio reporter and said, I want you to do the weekend producing and be the reporter. And same situation. It was a little overwhelming to him. So I said, don't worry. He doesn't know. He thinks you're the producer. I'll keep doing it and we'll be fine. So I, at this point, I'm a senior in college. And that's what we did. I produced the weekend shows and we just never told the news director because I didn't want to get the reporter in trouble. Wow. Well, apparently one day the news director comes in on a weekend and sees the anchor and says to the anchor, um, I just wanted to thank you, Carl, because I know you've been helping produce these shows. You have to, because I know these radio reporters don't know how to produce. And Carl said, I just looked at him and said, it's not me, it's Kathy. And apparently the news director said, the part-time news photographer who's a college student? And he said, oh yeah, she's been producing for months, even when the other reporter was, was here doing it, she's been the one doing it. And he said, really? And he said, yeah, well, that weekend I come in and Carl tells me, and I think, oh, my heavens, I'm the next one to be fired. I'm in trouble. So that week I am at Eastern and there is a career fair, and I'm at the career fair when they call me to the front desk and said, your station's calling you. And I'm like, okay. And so it's, I get on the phone, it's the news director, and I think, this is it. I'm at a career fair and I'm about to be fired. And I get on the phone and he says, I wanna talk to you when you get in today. Can you come right to my office before you go out? And I'm like, sure, I'll be there. So I hang up the phone and the whole rest of the afternoon, I'm like, here we go. This is the yeah. end of the beginning of my career. So I go to work, walk into his office, ready to be prepared to find another job. And he said, so I understand you've been producing weekends. And I said, well, yeah, but it was, and he goes, would you like to do that permanently? And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and so that's how I became a producer was accidentally because I did more than I was supposed to. And to me, you cannot find a better way to get into this career than to do more than you're supposed to do more, do whatever. And you might find out for yourself, it's something else you like, but you're also going to stand out. You know, I, my daughter, I tell her she works at a restaurant. She gets frustrated when people don't do their jobs. And I said, Allie, here's an idea. When you go to work, thank all of those people that are not doing their jobs. And she just looked at me so confused. And I said, because they make you look so good. They just make you look good. And she said the other day, one of her coworkers was complaining about that. And she said, I turned to him and I said, don't worry, they're making you look good. And I said, there you go. Because the more you do, the more you make yourself look good and it helps your own career. And to me, there's nothing more you can do than more to help yourself. Yeah, I kind of got cold chills hearing that story about how you were helping others when you did not have to. You could have easily have let them sank and, you know, uh, drown. You know, they were thrown into the deep end. But I think, like I said, I got cold chills because you were humble about it. The humility that you showed that, yeah, I, I was helping them, but, and then he tells you, you know, you uh, offers you that producer's job, so. Oh, I just uh, knew I was being fired. I just knew I was being called in to be fired. And I am so thankful that that I was able to help those other reporters. That that ended up being how I got into management. That's exactly yeah. how I got into management. Like I said, that is so awesome. Just the humility that you display throughout, and that you still do. Like I said, it, even mm -hmm. when I w worked with you, that was apparent from, you know, day one, so. Um, very cool story. And with that said, the fact that you asked for that opportunity to write and then it, you know, snowballs and all this other, um, opportunities. So what other advice would you give someone to develop their skills? Now I know that's a little different because you work with 
reporters to weather the sports to news and everything else photographers but maybe the first thing that comes to mind for you and your position to say hey, i think make sure it's your passion make sure this is what you want to do and, and sometimes when you get your foot in the door you're disappointed this isn't what you wanted and and that's the time to go to your managers and talk to them um intimidation can get in the way of your career your manager if if they're a good manager their door is open even when it's closed knock on it um you know mine's a glass door you can tell if i'm doing anything you slide the door out and come on in you know just go talk if it's not your passion and find what is your passion find what you love um you know you're a perfect example, Kyle. Look at you, you thought sports is what you loved. You right. you were a great photographer, but you were a great storyteller, and you did it for a while. But then you realized I've got another passion. This is something else I like. Follow your heart. Follow follow your gut. You know, I tell when when my news director is done interviewing somebody and plops them in my office, I always say follow your gut. And if it tells you this isn't the place, please don't come. I don't want you to come and be miserable. I want you to come and be happy and, and find a place um, because we will work you. You will work so hard in news. It will be one of the toughest careers you ever have. There is no nine to five. There is no Monday through Friday. And if you think there is, you are already looking at the wrong career already. Just find what, what your heart tells you you want to do. And to me, that's the most important thing. Yeah, and it's you just said it is one of the hardest um, industries. It's crazy. When I left, everything got easier because of what I went through for 10 years in TV. But I right. loved it. It's like you said, I had a passion for it, so it never felt like work. Although, you know, I was taught uh, by people like yourself to do more with less, do it with all your heart and your passion, pour yourself into it. And now what I do today, I'm thinking, wow, everything's moving in slow motion because of the things that I learned um, from TV. So... Um, that's a great reminder, Kathy. What, what advice, that was great advice, but what maybe great advice were you given along the way that maybe you've held on to and that's helped you, you know, advance in your career? You know, I think probably I was a little too intense sometimes. I was too caught up in the world. My, my thought was my career was going to be everything to me. I was not going to get married. I wasn't going to have children. I wanted my career to be everything. That was what I was going to focus on. And a little four pound, two ounce baby changed that when my great niece was born. And um, Allie, uh, her, her, bless her heart, her, her parents had a hard time and um, they kind of split ways and uh, things were not looking good for her. So I asked to become her guardian. And boy, let me tell you, be a single person and be a be a news person and you will learn really fast that you really do need a village to to raise a child. And if it wasn't for my parents, my siblings, my friends, I would I would have to call my brother and say, I am stuck at work because there's a tornado outbreak. Can you go and get Allie at daycare? And he had, his daughter was a month younger than Allie, and he and his wife were constantly driving 30 minutes to daycare and 30 minutes back to get him. I remember one time I got called in for a, a police, not a police, but a jail riot. And I got called into work when Allie was like three. And Bruce would open his office and let Allie make a bed on the floor, and she would uh, lie on the floor and, and sleep in his office when we were working. And that night i remember jimmy calling me saying where is my niece right now and i said well she's on the floor in my boss's office sleeping and he said i will be there in one hour to pick her up because work was even farther than daycare and so i mean that's just those are some of the things that suddenly my focus on work moved in another direction and it was a personal life too and i was told you need to work on this this balance. You've got to work on this balance or you're just going to fall over. And that was probably the best advice I ever had was step back sometimes. And it's not all your career. It's not all your job. Step back and remember what else is around you. 
Yeah, and I'm going to step back and acknowledge if, if you can hear that crying baby behind on the other <laughs> side of my door, I apologize. But I can't, so we're in the clear. Okay, well, <laughs> well um, for those of you can, so thank you for enduring on that. Um, well, speaking of challenges, um, what are some challenges that you face on, just like we talked about before we hopped on here, I mean, it's been nonstop since you've been in Nashville. Um, yeah. You know, from your position, talk about some of the challenges from your position as an assistant news director um, and just being in that newsroom and the things that you've had to deal with, again, on a seasonal basis or daily basis. I, I think the hardest thing has been wearing our staff out. In the past, prior to starting the call, I was telling you, in the past 12 months, we went from the March 3rd tornado outbreak and it was a mile from my house. I didn't realize it. I knew it was coming through. The alarms were going off in my house. Um, Allie and I ran to a closet and we couldn't get her dog in the closet. He knew, she knew something was going on. So I literally had to grab her and get her in the closet. And uh, it's one in the morning and my news director calls after the tornado goes through and says, are you okay? And I said, yeah. And he goes, I'm on my way to work. I said, I am too. So at one in the morning, we're going in on March 3rd, 2020 and had no idea how bad this tornado outbreak was. It was, it was absolutely terrible. Um, and of course you call your staff in and it's so stressful to deal with so much. I mean, so many of us had no power for days and it was, it was March, it was chilly, but you're also seeing all the heartbreak around you and all the destruction. And you know, that weighs on your staff. We go from March 3rd tornado outbreak to headlong into COVID. I think we went from doing a tornado story every single solitary minute of the newscast for four days to suddenly we have our first confirmed COVID case. And suddenly you have another big story popping in. And we went from all the COVID and you're going to have to work at home and you're going to have to work. You're going to have to be in the parking lot, in your car, and your office is going to have to be over here to now we have protests um, and our courthouse was set on fire and marches. And you went through COVID and that for several more months. And on the hot, you know, you're in the holidays and you think finally, um, things are starting to calm down. You know, COVID is still really bad and everything, but Christmas Day, we have a bomb that goes off downtown. And uh, I'm 20 minutes from downtown and I heard it. I got up and looked in the, my backyard to see if one of my neighbor's propane tanks or something had exploded. I couldn't figure out what it was when my phone rings and it's my producer. We were knocked off the air and she said, this is bad. And, and I said, how bad? And she goes, we've got our live shot up. We're just not on the air. Hold on. I'm going to FaceTime you. Well, I had just rolled out of bed. It was 630 in the morning and I'm like, okay. And so she FaceTimes me and turns the phone to the computer to show me the live signal. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. And I said, okay, get on the air as soon as you can stay nonstop. I'm heading in. I'll get there as soon as I can. So I hang up, I call the news director and I said, Albert, you need to get in now. We've got a bomb. I'm heading in. He said, a what? And I said, a bomb. And he's like, okay. And he's heading in too. And, um, you know, we had to deal with that. And then we had severe flooding in March. And it's, you, you worry about your staff and how much pressure they're under because it's just, it can be pretty rough. You know that, you know, when, when you're on yeah. a deadline and you're working nonstop, you think of the derbies that we had to cover and how many hours we put in and all the hours, you yeah. know, I'll meet you in the lobby of the hotel 3.30 so we can get over there in time. You, you worry about that. That's the hard part. Well, Kat, um, you, you obviously have been in multiple uh, uh, stations along the way and you've worked with some great journalists along the way. What do you think separates, you know, the good from the great? I mean, it's obvious, you know, the not so great from the great, but how about the, what is that you think that separates those individuals? My favorite part of, of a great person is someone who doesn't flaunt it. They know it, they know they're great, they know they're a hard worker, they know they're talented, but they don't throw it in people's faces. They take the time to help um, a new journalist, a new employee coming in. They take the time to encourage someone who 
just messed up in their live shot, just fumbled. And they tell them, I did that before too. Mm -hmm. They have the journalist who's kicking themselves because they, um, they just messed up a fact in their story and they got called in for it. Uh, they say, I did it too. You know, don't give up. It's, it's, it's the great person who doesn't flaunt that they're great. And those are my favorite of all. And in my opinion, that is you. So Kathy, I'm going to leave this last one up to you. Anything else that you want to add? Because I know we could go in so many different directions, but with respect of your time, anything else that you want to add that you want to make sure you share with this particular audience that they should know um, that, that you feel like, again, that you really want to share? Uh, know, know what you want to do, feel it, and, and know you can be successful. Just know you can do it. When you start doubting yourself, step back and figure out why you're doubting yourself and fix that. Fix whatever part you're doubting because you can be whatever you want to be. I mean, you, how many times do you hear, well, my mom and dad always told me you can be whatever you truly can, you know, you, follow your heart, follow, follow your gut and just know you can be successful and go do it. Thank you so much, Kathy, you. again, for making time, everything that you shared, um, and I'm looking forward to um, hopefully catching up with you in person someday. I know this virtual space is weird, but then again, we're significantly farther apart now or farther apart these days, but so happy for the success, uh, the success that you've had and continue to have in the example that you share, um, that you set for everyone along the way. Kyle, thank you. And thank you for doing this because there are a lot of people out there that, that need to hear other people in the industry and, and need this kind of guidance. And thank you for doing this. This is a wonderful, wonderful gift you're giving to other people. And thank you for checking out this channel. If you found this content beneficial, I'd appreciate it if you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and share it with someone you think might find it beneficial as well, because this channel was simply started and created to serve you, to help others grow, to learn how other successful TV journalists do or did it. So take what serves you so you can get better faster and reach your next level.